Okay, it's another day on It's a Perfect World, George Zimmerman. Okay, today uh, you had the forensic uh, pathologist there, one that they paid to come. And, you know, people are saying that he uh, corroborates George's story, basically. I don't know what part they're trying to be specific about that he is uh, corroborating his story or whatever, but um, I think he was a good witness for the prosecution, to be honest with you. And another thing, I would like to say my last video, you know what I'm saying, I was, I think I kind of flew off the handle a little bit and I thought, you know, I was thinking some things, but, and I was like, you know, fuck them, fuck all these people, but, you know, that was just me being a little bit upset right then. But I want to say today that I feel like the powers that be have been uh, listening to what's going on and they're understanding a little bit that this situation is like not worth what can come up out of this. I believe that they have taken the leash off the prosecution and, and said, go get them. You know, whatever, whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean any type of rioting or nothing like that. I don't mean no fallout like that. I mean that for this man to be on uh, television and to beat a murder child uh, in the fashion that, they ha that he's doing it and then to be basically, in my eyes, being caught red-handed, you know, uh, for them to give that blueprint out to America, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that's right. I think that uh, it, it'll cause more trouble uh, than uh, good. You know what I'm saying? I think that uh, people will start to take lo the law in their own hands and start to uh, commit crimes in the name of self-defense. Like everybody, a lot of people have tried to do that before. But I think it'll be even more so now that they have an opportunity to watch it play out in a trap you know what I'm saying so um, I like to just say that I think that uh, things are turning the other way so anyway let me get back to what I'm saying okay first of all I want to address one point about uh, one of the people say that they don't even think that it should be second-degree murder he shouldn't be tried with second-degree murder because there's no intent, no malice, and no hatred or whatever it is, ill will towards the person or whatnot. Now, I want to say, let me ask everybody a question. If someone broke into your neighbor's house across the street and stole their things, and then they, the next day they told you that their house was burglarized, how would you feel? You know, how would you feel? Me personally, I would feel upset. I would feel angry. I would feel like the people who did that were wrong because I know these people across the street. Depending on, especially if it was an elderly person or if it was a, you know, someone really that couldn't defend themselves or something like that, I would really feel upset about the situation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to be honest with you, I had an issue like that that happened. Uh, once before uh, in my neighborhood you know I'm, I'm actually out in my old neighborhood right now you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm outside in the element you know what I mean in the neighborhood the old neighborhood I'm, I'm outside at, at the park you know what I mean I'm not like at the house you know I live in another city now I live somewhere different you know what I mean I'm but I'm out here right now just sitting at the park just chilling you know, trying to get this in before, you know, people see me up here and then they want to come and all talk and all that stuff. So, I had a situation out here where some of the youngsters had broke into a house and stole this guy's computer and some other things of his uh, that he had and, you know, some things that, that the laptop especially had things in it that he couldn't get back. And when I found out who did it, you know, it was already it made me upset that people had broke into that house because that house was on the street that I used to live on. So when I found out who did it, you know, I immediately tracked them down and I told them, you know what I'm saying, give back that computer. You know what I'm saying? It was some other things that they had taken 
that it was like well it couldn't be recovered but you know the the computer i needed that back and it took a minute because it had gotten away from here whatever but i got it back and got it to that person and he was thankful and i didn't even know the dude you know what i'm saying but it was i was upset that they had done that on the street that i used to live on you know what i'm saying it was like it was to me it felt disrespectful you know what i'm saying and they was doing stuff out here and breaking into houses or whatever and people was very upset that they were doing these things and it was like it started to get to them that y'all cannot be doing that take that stuff somewhere else i mean I, that's not the solution but basically we were like upset that they were breaking into homes out here you know it was a problem so what i'm trying to say to you is there was an anger in these people i know that there was an anger in George Zimmerman and a malice towards the people who have been breaking into these homes. It was undeniable because if you've experienced that type of thing, you know that anger and you, you already know that you're upset. You want to catch these dudes. You want these dudes to stop because that shit is not cool. Period. We know this. I'm not justifying that shit or nothing. It is fucking not cool to be breaking in people houses and taking their shit. You know, these motherfuckers out here starving and shit, but you got people working hard for the shit that they got and then you come in your in their house and break it just so you could get high or, you know, whatever the reason. So that was to me where the anger started. Because he wanted to catch one of those people that was breaking in them houses. And rightfully so. You know, he didn't know him. He couldn't go talk to him. He couldn't tell him to stop. You know, none of that. You know, all he knew was some people coming to his neighborhood, breaking in the burglarizing houses. And they had been doing it for a year. And it's like, if it happens every other month, that's too many times. You know what I'm saying? And each time that it happens, it angers you. you, you the anger grows and grows and grows and grows. You know what I'm saying? So, that's where the anger and the malice and all that comes in whatever you need to make a self de a second degree murder case that's where it originated from that's where the anger and the you know i'm gonna get these fools i'm gonna do something to them when i catch them and ooh, if i get them in the right circumstance you know what i'm saying and that's where the thought process of i'm gonna kill one of these motherfuckers and i'm gonna blame that shit on self-defense you know what i'm saying that's where the thought originated from you know what i mean so that's why he started to do that shit you know that's why he took the necessary steps that he took as far as the the guard uh, being the the captain of the, of the ship around the neighborhood type of shit that's why that shit started to happen because of these break-ins and shit you know what i mean so at the same time I figure that's why I say he need to be charged with uh, motherfucking first degree murder. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that second degree murder because this shit was premeditated. That's why I say that. You know what I'm saying? I probably wouldn't even been tripping. You know, as sad as it sounds, as messed up as it sounds, as fucked up as it sounds, I probably wouldn't even been tripping, man, if too much, if they would have caught if he would have shot the motherfucker that was breaking in the houses and shit, and it would have came out that this dude was the one doing the breaking in the houses and all that shit, I wouldn't have, probably wouldn't have even gave a fuck, man. It probably wouldn't even be shit. You know, it would probably still be the trial going on and all this and shit. That family would be trying to get him to be charged with something, but I probably wouldn't have gave a fuck because I would have understood this motherfucker was breaking in the houses. You know what I'm saying? But Trayvon wasn't that motherfucker. We already know this. He went to school somewhere else. He was out there for a suspension. And he wasn't that type of dude. You know, we could go on to prove to you that he wasn't the, the, the burglar, man. He was not the burglar. So he shot the wrong motherfucker, man. Period, point blank. Okay, now, I'm going to throw my theory out there today, too, also. Like I've said before, my theory was that, is that, George Zimmerman came in, saw Trayvon. Trayvon was at the mailbox. Past Trayvon. Trayvon walked past him. Looked at him. At some point, Trayvon ran south. Like George Zimmerman said. He's running south. Towards the south entrance. Right? He ran down that street. George Zimmerman followed him down that street. Running. Trayvon cut across. He went across the lane that they had, they ended up on, went to the next street instead of making a right turn to go down to his father's home because no one was home. 
George Zimmerman is hot on this trail. He turned left and went back up in attempts to shake George Zimmerman. He comes up the trail, up the street, then turns right to come back down that trail once again. That, that middle trail. As he's coming back down that trail, by this time, George Zimmerman had come around the corner. And in that 911 tape, when George Zimmerman was walking and he says, I forget what he says, I'm, I'm going to do this again. But he says something and he's like, the, the operator asked him something and you could tell he's distracted. He's distracted because he's looking down. He's looking, he's like talking and he's looking. He's like, uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, call me at this because he's still out there searching. And then he goes back to the conversation. He tells him, you know what? Why not just call me? You know, instead of meeting me at the truck, you know what? Just why not call me? I believe at that moment, he figured out which direction Trayvon was going. So he hangs up the phone. He comes around the top of the T. Then he comes down the T. And, a, and he engages in a confrontation with Trayvon as he comes down the T. He was not on the walkway going towards his truck. No, he wasn't fucking, he came down that walkway. And from that point, the argument ensued. Somebody grabbed somebody. Now, that's where the bump. He claims that he was punched and he fell down. I don't believe that shit. I believe they grabbed one another because John Good himself said he saw them while they were horizontal. That's big. But he cut away from that. Nobody wants to talk about that shit. John Good said they were horizontal and they were like something was going on. At that moment, Trayvon could have pushed him back into the tree. He has a scratch on his head, an inch scratch on his head and a fucking five milliliter scratch, not even an inch and a five millimeter scratch on the back of his head, on his head. So his shit is going to bleed. You scratch yourself on your head, your shit going to start pumping blood, period. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to start pumping blood. You, Anybody have a hit on the back of their head? We had a saying back in the days, you know, and it still holds true to this day. I'm going to bust your head to the white meat. When you say that, when you bust somebody here to the white meat, that means that that shit is split and your shit is bleeding and you fucked up. You know what I'm saying? There's no denying about that. George Zimmerman was not split to the white meat by no means. It was a scratch. He didn't even need no stitches. Man, motherfuckers get hit in their head with a bat or stick or, you know, even if you grab somebody and try to slam them and then they get up underneath you and both of you fall on the ground and your head hits the ground, your head might be split to the, to the white meat. And his shit wasn't. You know what I'm saying? So if he's on the ground and somebody's bamming his head on the ground, fuck no. His shit would have been split to the white meat, man. That's what we used to say. And that's when it's cut deep down in there and it ain't even bleeding for a minute. It's split and you can see it opening and then all of a sudden it'll start to bleed. And then it won't stop bleeding until you staple that shit or stitch it back up. It will not quit. So what I'm saying is they were standing upright, wrestling. Boom, they hit the tree. George Zimmerman hits the tree. And one thing, it's, it's, a, it's branches. Everybody know if you stood up into a tree or a branch or something, your head could get scratched up. And I'm not even going to go with the tree part. He might have hit it on something else on the ground. But it wasn't a repetitive over and over and over bamming his head. He, but if he did hit that tree, the grass was slippery and wet. They both slipped. They both went to the ground. They're both jockeying for position because it's wet grass. Who's ever wrestled in wet grass? You know that it's, it's all bad when you're down there in that wet grass. You know, wrestling with somebody. You can't get any traction. You can't get any leverage because every time you try to get up, you slip and fall. So now they're in the grass. And they're slipping and they're sliding in the grass. You know what I'm saying? That's when the guy is hearing, uh, that's when the guy is saying uh, that he saw him horizontal now. First, they were, I mean, they were vertical, and now they're horizontal. Did I say horizontal in the beginning? I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say uh, vertical. You know what I'm saying? If I did, I can't remember if I did or didn't. But he testified for them to be vertical at first. Then they was, they was horizontal. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when they were down there wrestling in the wet grass, Trayvon is trying to get up. 
George Zimmerman has him in some type of a, a of a arm lock or a leg bar or something that's got causing him to scream. I'm 100% sure that that's Trayvon screaming in that in that uh, 911 tape now. I'm 100% sure because just like that dude said that he took that one that MMA for a year and the dude said he learned grappling and I was telling my girl that I was like I bet you they talking about the MMA shit. He learned some grappling and he had him in some type of submission hold and the dude said that he was a 0.5 for the whole year how the fuck you gonna go to a class for a whole year and not learn shit you just gonna stay punching the bag like he was on punishment and shit he paying his money to come to this class and you gonna make this man punch the bag for a year please man that man learned some moves he learned some takedown moves he, he probably ran him over with his police friends he got police people you know they know this shit so naturally, he grabbed that man, he either grabbed his nuts, he grabbed him in a leg lock, an arm bar, he did something that had that little boy hollering, you know what I'm saying? And it was him going, help, help, he, George Zimmerman did say help, he said help, but he didn't scream, that was Trayvon Martin screaming. So, he had him in such a way that he had access to that pistol. Trayvon wasn't on the side of him. Trayvon was trying to get up. He was in an arm bar, leg bar, something to that effect that had him screaming. That man pulled his gun out and had a good shot at his heart. And that man told Trayvon, you're going to die tonight, motherfucker. That's the reason why he keeps saying it because he doesn't know if someone heard that. So he's trying to pass it off as Trayvon said that. That's why another reason why he should be charged with first degree murder. That motherfucker did that shit, man. He thought Trayvon was a burglar. He thought Trayvon was high. He thought Trayvon was a person that probably ran from him once before. And that asshole was not getting away this time. That's how he felt. He was no way you were getting away from me this time. You know what I'm saying? If he was pulling, if he if he could have held him down until the police came, I don't know. Maybe he held. He would have held him down until the police came. I don't know. But any because if if someone would have just came outside, I don't think he would have shot him. I think he would have tried to break his arm he would have tried to hold him to the police came he would have did something to that effect thinking that he was that person but when Trayvon started to wiggle it loose and he started to lose grip of him and he thought that he was going to get away in that moment he decided to kill that boy you know what I'm saying and that's why he shot him in the heart he had a he had a he that was too calm collective of a shot you know what I'm saying for him to just get lucky like that no he is no possible no way that just like the doctor said that if he's getting his head bammed, he's getting his bell rung, he's getting, uh, uh, I forget the word that he used, stunned. If he's stunned, 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 and you can't breathe, and then all of a sudden, when you realize in a split second that this man is going reaching for your gun, you grab his gun like you said, you got his, he made a motion like this, he got his hand and then got his gun. Like you, your arm was straight enough to lock his arm underneath. You were strong enough to keep his arm underneath yours and then grab the gun. I believe that, yes, he went and grabbed, Tra after he shot him, he grabbed Trayvon's hands and spread them out. But he wasn't trying to spread his hands out. He was trying to put his prints on that gun. He had the gun in his hand, he took Trayvon's hands and he wanted to put Trayvon's hand on that gun and make a gun print on that, put that man fingerprints on that gun. But the Filipino dude walked up and stopped the shit. And he had to get up like, are you the police? He was spooked, he, oh, are you the police? No, we'll call the police. Well, you don't gotta call the police, help me with this dude, woo, 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 woo. whatever he said. He was capping the whole time. The dude was good, you know what I'm saying? But he not that good, but he, you know, he just, he one of them motherfuckers, man. He one of them niggas, as we would say. He one of them niggas. Them niggas would be, you know, with that shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what the fuck he is. You know what I'm saying? He's with the shit, straight up. And he killed him, you know what I'm saying, under the false pretenses, thinking that he was somebody else, thinking he was a burglar, and he wasn't. He just didn't want to kill somebody. He wanted to kill one of those burglars. He thought that that's who that was, you know what I'm saying? So he tried, when he tried to put his hands on his prints, he got stopped in the middle of that. So that's why his prints weren't on the gun. That's the reason why he looked at his hands. He knew he didn't have shit in his hands. You know what I'm saying? He knew that. He's sitting there fighting with the man. The man, he talking about the man punching him. He thought he had something in his hand. That's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? He knew. You know what I mean? How you gonna have something in your hands when he put his hands over your mouth? 
You know what I'm saying? When he put his hands over your mouth, you knew he didn't have shit in his hands. So why the fuck would you open his hands up after you shot him? Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? But I know, I believe that the powers that be has said, you know what? Enough of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Finish this dude off. And I think that's what's going to happen, man. I think they're going to convict this punk ass. You know what I'm saying? You know, so... It's getting a little dark out here, man. You, you, the light is going down, you know. I'm out here, up here at the park. I wish... Let me see. I could take a walk for two minutes. I wonder how long... How far I can get if I walk for two minutes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to start... Because, see, I got a counter on my, on my computer. You know what I'm saying? I'm just walking around with a laptop. So, I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it right now. Boom. So. We're going to see. And this is just basic walking. You know what I mean? How far. I could get. In two minutes. You see that? That I've gone down the back side of a building now I've gone <laughs> I've gone on another side of a building now I'm in the front of a building of the building And it was just a minute. I still have a whole nother minute. Now I'm walking down the street. This whole time, George Zimmerman is on the phone with the police, I mean, with the, the operator talking. You know what I'm saying? He's not just standing. He didn't just walk down the T and stand down there on the other end of the T and then walk back. He had made a square because Trayvon made a square and came back and he followed him. He chased him. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking all the way down the street now. You see that back behind me? I'm gone from there and I still got seven, eight seconds left. More than that. Come on, man. It's a perfect world, George Zimmerman.